Okay, here is a uh, problem that I wrote, and it I originally was going to do something based on the Netflix show Space Force, uh, but I decided to just make it a little bit different. So here I have a satellite I want to launch from my moon base. I want it to orbit at an altitude of 50 kilometers. So let's just go ahead and start with the picture. So let's say here's my moon. And then here is my satellite to start with. And then I want to finish with the satellite up here. And this distance is 50 kilometers. Now, on the Earth, you couldn't do that because at 50 kilometers high, there's still a lot of air drag and it just wouldn't work. But you can do it up here, okay, because there's no air in the moon, so you're cool. Uh, and the mass of the satellite is 421 kilograms. And the question is, how much energy do I need to get into orbit? So let's just go ahead and start with our system. The system is going to be the satellite plus the moon. And because I have both of those, then I can have gravitational potential energy, negative G, M1, M2 over R. Okay. If I don't have, if I just have the satellite, you can't have gravitational potential energy. And I can't use U equals MGY. I can't do that because that assumes the gravitational force is constant. That only works on the surface of the Earth, close to the surface of the Earth. You could use it close to the surface of the Moon, too, where the gravitational force is mostly constant. But here, it's not. Okay. Um, so let's just say if that's the case, that's the mass. Now I can say work is the change in energy. It's going to be the change in kinetic energy plus the change in gravitational potential energy. And I want to find the work. So we'll call this position 1 because all that position 2. So work is going to be K2 minus K1 plus U2 minus U1. Now one of these terms is 0. The term that is 0 is this one, K1. Because we're assuming it starts from rest. Uh, if, if it's on the equator of the moon and the moon's rotating, it's not at rest. But it's PDC, which means pretty darn close. Okay, to zero, because the moon doesn't rotate very fast. So that's a good approximation. Um, okay, so now we just need to put in all these things. Now there is a problem, but I'll just go ahead and write it out. Work is the final kinetic energy, one half m. I'll call this m and this me for the mass of the moon. One half m v2 squared. Now I have this one minus uh, g, which is the gravitational constant, m mass of the moon over the distance. So this distance is going to be, let's call this the radius of the moon, big R, and let's call that H. So this is going to be big R plus H. And then minus the initial, so it's going to be minus a negative, so it's going to be plus G mass, mass of the Earth. Why am I calling the mass of the moon E? Well, that's pretty dumb. Mass of the moon. Uh, divided by just R. So that's it. Okay, so I know the mass of the moon. I know the mass of the satellite. I know G. I already gave that to you. I know R. I know H. So I know everything right here, but I don't know V2. Aha. Do not know V2. So I actually have to find V2. So let's, let's go over here. Oh, look at that. That's a bad thing about this pen. Okay, so let's redraw my picture here. Here's the moon. And there's my satellite. And so what force is acting on this? Well, I have a gravitational force that way, Fg. So if I write this as this is my x and y direction, I can say F net in the x direction is mass times acceleration in the x direction. The net force is going to be, in the x direction, it's going to be negative g, mass of the satellite, mass of the moon, over r plus h squared, right? That's the component of the gravitational force in this direction, and that's why it's a negative sign. And this is my distance from the centers is r plus h. And that's going to be equal to the mass of the satellite times acceleration. The acceleration, because it's moving as a circle, is v squared over r plus h. Now, I, and that's actually v2, I can solve for v2. So this is going to cancel with that. This is going to cancel with that. I get V2 squared equals, uh, and that's actually negative 2 because it's in the negative direction. It's going to be G 
mass of the moon over r plus h. Now, I could go ahead and get a value for this, but I'm not going to. Uh, and I'm not even going to take the square root because actually I need v squared. So let's put everything back in. So now I get uh, work is 1 half m times v2 squared, which is this. So it's going to be g mass of the moon over r plus h. And then I get minus uh, the first potential, the final potential, which is g mass, mass of the moon over r plus h. And then I have the initial potential, which is plus g mass, mass of the moon over r. Now you see, I actually saved myself from work here because I have this term and I have this term and the only difference is one half. So this is like minus one and that's a half. So if I add these two together, I get minus a half times that. You could put in your numbers if you wanted to, okay? So I'm gonna get minus one half g m m moon over r plus h plus g m m moon over r plus h over r. Okay, and then I'm gonna simplify this. I can say minus one half, let's say actually write this, g m m moon, because that's in both terms, and then I get uh, minus one over two r plus h plus one over r. Okay, so now let's put in all our values. I'll put it over here, work. Can you see that? Yep. Work equals g, 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th. Mass of the satellite is 421. I'm leaving off my units because I'm lazy. Mass of the moon, seven, I'm just gonna use 7.35 times 10 to the 24th. 7.35 times 10 to the 22nd. Okay, now I need negative one over two times this distance, which is gonna be the radius of the moon, 1.74 times 10 to the sixth, plus 50 kilometers, which is plus five times 10 to the fourth, plus one over the same thing, which is just gonna be sort of the radius of the moon, 1.74 times 10 to the sixth. Okay, now we get to put this in our calculator. Actually, you can see here how awesome RPN is. I'm not trying to sell you on it, I'm just telling you what I like, okay. So I'm gonna start right here, 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th, enter, 421 times, uh, 7.35 times 10 to the 22nd times, now I'm over here, so I'm gonna say negative one, one change sign, enter. Okay, I didn't multiply those. Now I need to do this multiplication, this addition down here. 1.74 times 10 to the sixth, enter. Five times 10 to the fourth, plus. Now I need to multiply all that by two, so I go two times. Now I have, I have negative one divided by that, so I have negative one right there and there, so I just say divided by and I'll return the answer. So now that is this part. Now I need to do this part, which is 1.74 times 10 to the sixth. And then uh, I can just do one over, but let's say this one over button, I should have done one first. One over. Now I can add that to this number. Now that's this whole thing, and now I'll multiply it by that. And I get, ooh, lots. Okay, I don't know, mine should go to scientific notation, but I can't, Six point uh, one times 10 to the two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight joules, which seems like a lot, and it is a lot, but you know, you got to think in terms, it's hard to com imagine a joule. If you take the textbook from the ground and you put it up to the table, you lift that, that takes work against gravity, that's about 10 joules, okay? So it's not, you know, so. 10 joules is not a lot, right? You can do that easily. But that's the answer to get that thing into orbit. And there you go.